Russia is planning to launch an attack on Ukraine's northern Kharkiv region with an estimated 50,000 troops by late May and early June, Ukrainian military observer Kostyantin Mashevets told The Economist. The expert explained that Russia has already concentrated 35,000 troops north of the Ukrainian border in these areas. Mashevet stressed that Kharkov is reliably defended. Speaking about the possible scenarios of Russian attack, the expert said Russia might be planning to isolate Kharkiv by seizing the road to capital Kiev and advance to Kharkiv to create a defense zone for Russia's Belgorod city on the border. The commander of the 92nd Brigade, Pavlo Fedosenko, warned that the Russian army may also end up in the Dnipro, Kharkov and Krivoy Rog cities in a few weeks if Ukraine does not fight for Konstantinovka, a small town in Ukraine's Donbass region and Drushkovka. It should be noted that Ukraine maintains tens of thousands of troops in the north of the country, far from the active battlefronts. Ukrainian Commander-in-Chief Oleksandr Sersky recently said he was sending more artillery and tanks sorely needed on active fronts to bolster northern forces. Complete ruins and death. The village of Rabotino of Ukraine no longer exists. The village of Rabotino, which became the most famous point of last year's counter-offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces, no longer exists today. Now it is a continuous heap of ruins in the bare steppe where corpses of Russian invaders and burnt equipment of the invaders lie between heaps of broken stones. A visual understanding of what the territory of the village looks like now is provided by a video shot from a drone by soldiers of the 3rd Spartan Operational Brigade. The Ukrainian monitoring project Deep State notes that these images illustrate Russian war tactics. Everything around is strewn with corpses, burnt Russian equipment, but they continue to climb like zombies endlessly. You can see the consequences of Banzai attacks in the form of a knocked out unit or single remains of monsters in trenches, pits and ruins. It's difficult for the Russians to gain a foothold there because they themselves raised everything to the ground, analysts say. It is noted that the situation around the former village of Rabotino remains very complex and dynamic. It's just a continuous grey area, ruins and death that Russians bring with it, they say in deep state. According to data in open sources, the village of Rabotino was founded in 1869, although it existed as a farm at least half a century before that. In those days, Tsarism actively promoted the settlement of the Black Sea region by various peoples, but this village was precisely Ukrainian. According to the 2001 census, about 480 people lived in the village. On March 6, 2022, the village was captured by Russian invaders and was under Russian control until August 2023. The battles for the liberation of the village began on August 7, 2023, and on August 23, it was finally cleared of invaders. During these battles, Ukrainian fighters evacuated the last residents of the village who were still there. Rabotino became the southernmost point of the Ukrainian counter-offensive in this direction. Since the beginning of 2024, the Russians have been making significant efforts to return under their control what is left of the village in order to eliminate on the map all the achievements of the summer counter-offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces. French military already present in Donbass, French journalist Christelle Niant a military correspondent from France living and working in the Donetsk is convinced that the French military is already taking part in hostilities in Donbass on the Kiev government's side. I'm almost sure that there are French soldiers on Ukrainian battlefields because it would be impossible for the untrained Ukrainian military to operate Caesar self-propelled howitzers, she told TASS in an interview. She added that the Ukrainian armed forces is drafting people with no military experience as part of its mobilization campaign and sends them to the front line after just two or three weeks of training. Effectively, it is impossible to operate a self-propelled howitzer after a three-week training. This means that someone else with much greater experience is using them. Clearly, those should be people with military background and experience of using such weapons, in other words, French career officers or former soldiers. That is why I believe that French soldiers are already on the battlefield, Niant said. In her opinion, France has been sending its military to Ukraine in small groups to mitigate possible political risks for the current French leadership. At this point, sending a large group will be a major risk for French President Emmanuel Macron. If they perish all at once, he will have to take the consequences, she said, adding that it is a lot easier to find a plausible public explanation for occasional deaths. 
That is why I think that he will not send the military in thousands, the journalist added. Otherwise, how would the French government explain to thousands of families where their loved ones are? In an interview with the British magazine The Economist, French President Emmanuel Macron acknowledged it might be possible to consider sending troops to Ukraine in case of Kiev's request if Russian forces break through the front line. Russian presidential spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters that these speculations were an unprecedented new round of tension. If the French military appears in the conflict zone in Ukraine, it will inevitably become a target of the Russian army. The spokeswoman of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Maria Zakharova, said this. If the French appear in the conflict zone in Ukraine, they will inevitably become targets of the Russian armed forces. It seems to me that Paris understands this well, she said.